What's the good word, Josh? Your boy DKB here. So let's talk quickly about some of the cuts uh, that we know about so far, how that's impacted the roster. So I do have a quick theory. I think we'll see a lot more defensive players. Uh, that's probably by design as well. I think we probably skew more heavily towards uh, defensive players within the 90-man the you know, construct. Uh, but considering we have Aaron Rodgers, considering we have this new offensive coaching staff and, you know, by all resume history, they seem well equipped to come out here and develop players. I think we could see more casualties with some of these defensive guys, even though they're standing out like Trey Dean, because you want to give this offensive coaching staff as many opportunities with as many intriguing, talented pieces as you can. So, Keep that in mind, but let's go ahead and dive into it. So we had linebacker Claude and Cheryliz, uh, who was reported to be cut. Based on what I'm seeing here, it seems like uh, it, I, he didn't do anything exceptional to really stand out uh, over the course of this season, right? I mean, uh, basically, he fit the mold for what Robert Sala likes, a linebacker that can cover the field. He can go out there and hit. Uh, wasn't especially proficient in anything like pass coverage or anything like that, so... The biggest uh, plus with him is that he didn't look inadequate or ill-suited to play the position. Um, he also, you know, kind of dealt with a few lingering injuries. So I expect him to land on the practice squad. I don't think there will be too much concern or issues there with him. Uh, next, we had, of course, the big one, Trey Dean. Uh, the guy that everybody expected was going to make the roster over Ashton Davis, just based on what we've seen, what we've heard, the reports between training camp and the preseason games, he outperformed Ashton Davis, and yet somehow Davis remains and lives on the roster once again. So uh, I think the biggest tip is that Ashton Davis, he's had a few years within the system. Finally, looks like he was turning the corner. I mean, he wasn't terrible during the preseason for once. Um, and then you take a look at what he means to this special teams core as being a, a core contributor. So um, there are a few signs there that make sense, but I just assumed we were going to go with the high upside developmental prospect that has some pretty obvious uh, benefits to this defense in terms of covering tight ends, covering running backs, uh, the, the viciousness with which he plays the safety position as kind of an enforcer, uh, and you'll kind of mold and build around that skill set. But Hopefully he clears waivers and we can get him back on the practice squad, but it seems very unlikely based on what he showed and the hype that the New York Jets are getting, you know, as a, a overall team, uh, you'd expect a, a lot of teams are going to be able to get a little bit more research done and pill for some of these guys. Uh, we had linebacker Sam Iguavin uh, that we assigned late into the season. He was basically a camp body. If he was going to make the roster, it was going to be because he was a solid special teams contributor. Uh, but there wasn't really going to be much opportunity for him to make the roster. Uh, Jamie and Sherwood seems a given, especially after... Um, especially after... Uh, why am I forgetting his name? Especially after our boy Quan got signed by the Steelers. Um... So yeah, it is what it is. I, no misses there. Won't be a practice squad candidate for us. The other big shoe was Zonovan Knight. This one kind of had the writing uh, on the wall for him. Once we signed Dalvin Cook, once he had that terrible performance against the Buccaneers, um, kind of the same situation with like an Ashton Davis, if you will. Michael Carter, familiar within the offense. We know what he's going to bring a little bit better than what we know we're going to get out of Zonovan Knight. Um, the encouraging aspect of it is that Zonovan Knight looked like our best running back uh, throughout the entirety of training camp. They just didn't translate over to the games well. Um, and so ideally, you hope we get him back on the practice squad as well. But I've been seeing different reports that he could have been a trade candidate. Um, and that we've had a few teams that have been sniffing around to kind of see what that looks like with him. So... He also could be gone. Um, we cut uh, Adam Pinky. I believe he was a, a guard for us. That maybe got some tackle reps as well. Nothing critical there with him. A lot of people aren't even going to be super familiar with the name. Uh, I doubt we bring him back. A lot of these guys that have been hanging out onto the roster, uh, like Greg Sanat, for example, for a long time, considering we have uh, Keith Carter in there now, uh, we'll probably hit the refresh button and try to get some fresh talent in there. See if we can mold maybe one of those guys up and get a surprise candidate or two to contribute. That leads me to Greg Sinat. Again, he's also been cut. Um, if he comes back, I won't be entirely surprised. But again, that's going to be dependent 
on uh, what the coaching staff views him as. He did at least stick around with the third string unit for the entirety of uh, preseason. Never really got called up or anything like that, but uh, he's a body, right? Uh, essentially, he's a jag, just a guy for us. Um, the interesting name out here, linebacker Pita Tamoe Pinu. Don't slaughter me, guys. I got a Hawaiian brother. I should know this a lot more. But uh, he was the XFL Defensive Player of the Year that we assigned. I want to say midway through training camp or so. He was realistically just supposed to be a camp body as well. But he did have an interesting background as a Defensive Player of the Year. Strong pass rushing uh, ability. It's interesting to see that we have him labeled as a linebacker as opposed to being, uh, you know, an edge player for us. Um and he did jump in and, you know, kind of contribute somewhat right away. Came in and got a sack against the Giants. Um, didn't do much against the Bucks per se, but I, I did hear there were a couple plays he made um, during joint practices. So I would love to see him squeak onto the practice squad. I'm pretty sure we can make that happen. But teams have been more interested in some of these CFL guys as of late. So uh, Nick Vigil, the veteran linebacker that we signed at the same time as Sam Iguavine, uh, he got cut. Thought he could have been a name that stuck around as maybe the fourth linebacker, depending on how Zaire Barnes performed. Uh, but I think that shows that the team loves Zaire Barnes. They also have an affinity for Chad Surratt. Um, and so it really, you know, limited his prospects of joining the team. For what it's worth, though, I did like that he had, uh, you know, former leadership duties in terms of play calling and different things like that that we could have looked forward to. So if nothing else, keep in mind the Jets generally do a very good job of uh, recalling some of these guys that they've worked with before that maybe they like to a certain degree, not enough to keep on the roster, but if an emergency occurs, they can go back and pick them up. Um, and then just some other news, right? These aren't cuts, uh, but Jimmy Moreland, he's on the injured reserve list. He's a surprising name there because we haven't heard anything about him being injured. From what I recall, during any of the training camps or, or anything of that kind. So uh, maybe it was an injury that snuck up and came out of nowhere. But he'll be on IR. If he stays on IR, um, then he'll be on there for the entirety of the year. We'll just keep his rights until the next offseason. Uh, and then a guy that's on the waived uh, injured reserve list is our other cornerback we picked up, Javelin Guidry. Um, signed him pretty late. Uh, after the Falcons let him go and you know he's a familiar name for us a guy that we really like uh, once upon a time when we were looking at like bless on Austin as being one of our top cornerbacks Javelin Guigi was a guy that was impressing for us so um, some some interesting names here to be honest though I would still revert back to kind of my theory about the New York Jets trying to retain as much offensive talent as possible, um, hence the trade Dean move. Uh, Bam Knight's not so much of a surprise there, considering um, you can technically call us stacked at the running back position with what we have. Um, but let me know what your guys' thoughts were. Uh, I know trade Dean probably hurts the most for uh, all of us, um, but it is what it is. Let me know what you think about the theory. Let me know what you think about the roster move so far, and uh, I'll catch you guys again. Peace. Yeah.